All right. Well, uh, hi, everybody. I'm Ben Dunkel, and uh, happy to be here at WordCamp Rochester. Thank you to all the organizers and sponsors. And um, I'm going to talk about how my title is How Close Are We to No Code? Um, just a little bit about me. I uh, live in Buffalo. I run a Buffalo, or I help organize a Buffalo Word Camp and Meetup group. We're on meetup.com. If you ever want to jump on our uh, meetup, it's every Thursday, uh, first Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We used to do it live, but we've been doing Zoom lately. So um, let's get right into it. Um, so when this word, I say this word, we, what I'm referring to are uh, people that make communication designs. Um, that's always been designers, uh, business owners, marketers, um, people that make publications, magazines, brochures, people that put things out there that are uh, used for mass communication. Um, and in this case, for us, we're WordPress users that are at this conference. So that's who I mean by we. And uh, um, so a little bit about the way this talk came about came to light is at the last WC Buffalo, which we had back in April, and we're going to try and run it again next spring, so look forward to April or May. Um, I did a talk called The Death of Child Themes, and what I was trying to figure out was, as I keep making more WordPress websites, at what point do I not even need to use child themes anymore? At what point are the themes that you use capable of extension without extra coding, without extra folder management and files that go into it. Uh, and now that I've been thinking of it that way, I almost could have named this talk The Death of Themes because I've been on a mission to build websites without ever doing anything beyond installing WordPress, and that's it. And I'm trying to see how far I can go. So the last few websites I've designed have taken that approach. Let's see what we can do out of the box with WordPress. And once we get to a point where we can't go any further, that's when maybe we need to put in a different theme or a child theme, or maybe we need to install plugins, or maybe we need to install um, you know, non-native WordPress blocks. Um, so I call this what, uh, how far are we from no code, but it helps to talk a little bit about how I'm referring to code uh, in this case. So code as it goes with websites traditionally, HTML, CSS, particularly for WordPress, PHP, and more currently uh, JavaScript as ways that we code websites. Um, but I want to think of it in a broader terms as uh, anything that goes beyond what you can do with WordPress. What, what comes in and you install WordPress and you log in, anything that you have to do that requires additional installation or customization or coding, I'm going to call that coding, code, because it's, we're talking about no code. We don't want to do those things in terms of how far can we go. Um, and so a little more about the word no, no code. It's a kind of a buzz term in the development community um, for ways to make apps and other very complex systems without touching code. Can we do that? Do you need to be a developer to make something? Do you need to know how to edit, write, debug, fix, <coughs> and um, create code? I've always likened that term to WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get, no code. So that as I'm doing something visually on the screen, I'm seeing it take place and emerge in real time. I don't have to take that code and look at it through another window or put it into a com compiler, make it into an executable app or something. I see it as I get it. So what you see is what you get. That never works. Um, what you see is what you hope you get because you never really get 100% of what you think you're gonna get. So it's not really a standard. Um, it's a loosely defined term, no code. And I group in the word Gutenberg, which we hear all the time, and blocks. 
and full site editing. Those things are all, in my mind, no code. They're ways of building stuff without having to lift up the hood, to make things using the tools that are provided for you by the um, WordPress system. Why do we want to pursue a no-code world? Because we want people to be empowered to do things, whether they're good at coding or not. We want your design sensibilities, your creativity, your brainstorm, those should be able to be realized without that extra layer. Um, that's, I think, the dream of no code, that someday we'll be able to do the, that. Uh, it's an empowering term. It makes us able to make things without relying on other people's skill sets or having to pay other people, uh, being able to do it ourselves, um, making the process easier, essentially. <coughs> uh, no code is not a new term or WYSIWYG or whatever you want to call it. The um, well, programs that I've shown, I'm showing up here represent ways that we pursue that dream of making things ourselves. Um, there, back in the days of print, there was no web pre, well, the early, mid 90s, you, uh, everything was print. Um, so you used PageMaker or Quark, uh, InDesign, which is still the industry standard for print design. Um, I think it's Adobe, one of Adobe's most successful products there's been some uh, unsuccessful products under the legacy web column here. I don't know if anybody remembers Go Live, but that was my first WYSIWYG web editor that I used, um, which was kind of taken over by Dreamweaver, as well as Fireworks. These were ways to make websites without coding in some ways. Um, front page was Microsoft's uh, piece of junk. And then uh, they tried to follow that up with Expression Web, which was another piece of junk. I have a funny story about front Expression Web. I went to a conference, I don't even remember what the conference was, but they were handing out Expression Web install CDs. So I had like five of them by the end of the thing. And I put them on eBay and I sold each one for about 250 bucks. And I was like, this is the most easy 1,250 bucks I've ever made in my life because I'm never gonna use this garbage anyway. Uh, so, so I don't know what happened to those installs, but whatever. Um, and then we look at the modern web, the world of no code. If you want to make a website, you can use Wix or Squarespace. I think those are very commonly known uh, sites, Weebly. And now if you're a, um, I probably should, there was one I wanted to put on here, which is uh, Webflow. If you're more of a coder or more of a, somebody that's got more development skills um, and you want to use a more WYSIWYG approach, you can use something like Framer, uh, Webflow, uh, or WordPress. Um, I think WordPress, though, kind of, the way you use it, it could be considered more of a Wix or a Squarespace, or it could be considered more of a developer's tool. Um, and there was a time when if you were a print designer, you had to know code too, or at least you could use code effectively. Uh, this is a example from Stack Overflow of somebody asking how you would code something in PostScript. And PostScript is like HTML for print. Uh, and so you could open up a text editor, write that code, and create a basic printed page. Um, so it's not, that, uh, it's not that print is that much different, but it was really easy to take print and go to a no-code world. Because in print, we have constraints. We, have, we know how big that somebody's going to be seeing the end up ended the uh, final document. We know how the context that they're going to be looking at it in, and we don't don't know those things when it comes to web. Um, so WordPress is like many tools; it's not perfect, but WordPress is less perfect than a lot of tools that people use, um, and over time. It's why WordPress has seen some migration to these other platforms, or when people are onboarding onto using the, uh, making websites, um, WordPress is becoming less and less of a popular choice. And um, I think that's 
I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a sense that I get that people are being told, don't use WordPress. It's so antiquated. They, they just don't have the tools like Squarespace does, like Wix does. You should really build your website using those things. Um, and that's because there have to be really rigid constraints in a WYSIWYG environment, in a no-code environment. You need to be able to test and roll out features that aren't going to break people's existing sites or apps or whatever they're doing. And you can do those things with proprietary systems like Squarespace or Wix. You know, you're not going to break a million websites. Like every time WordPress releases a new version, it's just all over the web, all the things that people were using that are broken. And that's why they're very hesitant to put new features into it because that's a big concern. Um, there's a big net there. Uh, when I say OSS here, I'm talking about open source software, which WordPress is. Um, open source software has a lot of challenges to keep up. Open source is great because people volunteer and make it. It's free, and you're able to learn from it and use it for your own purposes. On the other hand, open source has to serve a lot more people and um, has a lot more responsibilities in that way. For a long time, WordPress used the Tiny MC editor, which is when you look at your older websites that need to be updated, you'll see the classic editor. There's another way that people talk about it. Um, and that was it. You could, what you see was what you get, sort of, if you want to look like your text bold, you hit the little B button. Or if you need some uh, list items, you can click one of those two lists. And, you know, very limited capabilities. You can't do much beyond making your text have a little bit of formatting. Um, and so that was where um, uh, page builders emerged. Is everybody familiar with what a page builder is? It's um, OK. So it's a, just in a, a way of making WordPress more powerful and do things that people want to do, like have their own custom layouts and have a slider that actually uh, they can see working as they edit the page. Or, um, and, and page builders emerge like Beaver Builder and with Divi and Elementor, because WordPress wasn't, wasn't accommodating that need. It wasn't meeting the needs of people that wanted those things. Um, and that's why Gutenberg emerged. That's where the, the birth of Gutenberg was in addressing this problem. Um, so uh, is uh, Gutenberg no code? And it isn't. Uh, and it probably will never be. I don't think anything can ever be truly no code. And when I say no code, remember, I'm saying WYSIWYG. I'm saying full site editing. I'm saying, you know, not ever having to do anything beyond the core set of tools that you're given. Um, but it's good to look at how close is WordPress to that. Because that should always be the goal. That should be where we're heading. And we should strive to bring it closer as much as we can. So I thought about um, how you can describe any communication interface, print, web, anything that we're using to communicate an idea or interact with a user. Um, and these are the core parts of it. Layout, how we divide up a space. Uh, color, how we fill it with colors and establish contrast. Um, image, how we incorporate images within a, a layout or an, an interface. Uh, typography, how we use text. Interactivity, how we allow for people to perform actions on our website. Um, and accessibility, how we make sure that the content that we're serving um, is reachable by the widest amount of uh, range of people. And those are areas that WordPress has some, uh, Gutenberg has some great tools, uh, but needs more. So let's take a look at each one of those. So as I've been working in Gutenberg and trying to do as little coding as possible, these are the uh, what I want and what I get, WYSIWYGs uh, that I see. And this is just three columns. Each one of them has sort of a card with a panel. I've got a title in here, and then I've got some text below it. And WordPress lets you do that. It has rows. It has columns. It has stacks, which is kind of like columns. Um, but when you, if I was going to try to make this in Gutenberg, I would create a three-column layout. 
I would fill each of my columns with white, and then I would put text in each one, and I would get something like this, where the column would, you know, expand, despand upwards to fit the size of the content inside of it. Uh, and so I would, most people, they see this happen, they go, oh, I hate blocks. Let's install a cadence um, row. Or that's a, and now when I say cadence, I mean the new thing in WordPress as I'm seeing it are extension blocks, blocks that fill the gaps in a way that, um, you know, plugins used to. Not that they're any that much different, but you don't really need a, to do a plugin a lot of the times. All, all, you'll, all you'll need to do is just add an extra block that doesn't come inside of WordPress to the start. So that would be what most people would do. At this point, I would probably do that too if I didn't want to code. If I, if I had to though, I would open up my CSS file and just tell them to all line up using code. Um, layers. So a lot of times people look at pages built with Gutenberg or, um, and, they, and they go, well, why is everything just, I, why can't I do this? Why can't I take my words and put them a little bit over on top of my image? Or how do I shift things around and, and put things exactly where I want them to go? And there's a lot of page builders and, and plugins that'll let you pick on, uh, click on that little dog and move it over to the right so that the text is over top of it. And people want that. When you do a print layout, you're doing that all the time. You're making a poster, you're putting layering in there. There's this three-dimensional. This is part of that layout thing. I think of it as like a, the Z part of it. X and Y are rows and grids, and layers is that third layer. Um, so those are things that are lacking. If there was a better way of handling that, we'd be good. Colors. So WordPress has made some great um, progress with colors. There's uh, a really good color editor. There were bugs with it. It gets better and better and better every time. But I want control of colors. I want my gradient to have little stops along the way. And Eric back there is in my um, design class right now. And you're dealing with this uh, gradient editor um, with your latest project. And it's really powerful. I can add stops along the way. I can change the colors of them, move them around. And in WordPress right now, I can pick a gradient. Sure, I can have a start color and an end color. Other than that, beyond doing that, there's not a lot I can do. So I want to see better gradient handling for one. I know, other than that, though, I think WordPress has got the no-code thing down with the colors. It's, I can't think of everything. But that's where I, you know, if you, you can either wait for the discussion part or you want to chime in. If you see any of these things that you could say, oh, yeah, I don't like this, or I wish WordPress did this, that's what I want to hear, too. So. Uh, right. Yeah, filling my box with that color. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. You can fill it with a basic gradient, but you can't um, do much more than that. And I don't know if you can do much more than that with other popular page builders because I don't really use them that much. I know, that's right. This one right here, after I'm done, stick around for the page builder side of this. Um, yeah, and we go at it too. It's fun. Uh, imagery. So where are we with imagery? Um, putting images be in, as backgrounds is a core part of no code. It's I want my image to go where it's supposed to go. I want it to line up. And um, if it's bigger than my container, I want to control how much of my image and where that image is being displayed. And you know, InDesign does it beautifully. You draw a picture frame, you insert an image in there, and you right click, and you have this fitting option where, depending on your choice, the image is going to get cut off the way you want it to get cut off. There's just no way of doing that in WordPress. So what people end up doing is um, either not using an image or maybe trying some kind of a plugin. Um, this one really, really has to change. The SVG support, I don't know. Uh, some of these things could be coming up around the corner in WordPress, so I, I can't imagine that SVG support won't be soon. But when you're designing a logo and you're in an editor like Figma here, you know, your, your logo looks beautiful because it's built out of vectors, which are mathematical coordinates describing the, the size and shapes of things. And you can't upload that SVG 
scalable vector graphic as your logo, you have to up upload a PNG file, which is a bitmap based file. And although it might look fine, I took a screenshot of uh, InstaWP, which uh, is a really cool website. But again, the, look at the softness of that. Uh, you can't really see up here. It's, I, I just notice Edge is really, really obnoxiously. And any time I see a website that has a PNG logo, I, I go, ah, I wish it was just SVG. It just, I need the crisp Edge. So there's no edges there. Uh, the, there's soft edges there. Because you can't upload a P, an SVG file. Yeah. Um, and I have clients that send me these images, and they're all taken with cell phones, so there's plenty of pixels there. And they might be sharp, and they might not be sharp, but when they're three and a half inches wide, only somebody who's an imaginary person who's looking at critically could see that it's not a thousand percent sharp. And all of them uniformly don't care. I know. I mean, it's the cell phone, you know. Right. It rules everything in terms of, of layout and everything else. And that's where the no code thing falls down all the time. Yeah. At least with the stuff that I work on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a problem for me, but the client being able to handle what that looks like on the cell phone screen by themselves is a 0.00001% that they could ever figure it out if they wanted to. Most of them are busy selling their widgets, right. or their services, or whatever it is that they do, and they have absolutely no interest in using WordPerfect as a business tool. Right. You know, it, it's yeah. the cell phone is the first thing, and the second thing is they don't want to fix their fleet of trucks themselves because they're not mechanics, and they don't want to fix their website themselves because they're not developers. Yeah, that's a good, that, right, that's my, that's, that's kind of what I'm, you know, ta trying to tackle is, is should that, is that a bad thing? And I think it is. I think you can fix your website. Obviously, you can't fix a truck, but how, why shouldn't you be able to fix your website? Right? Um, anyways, I'm going to keep going, but let's, let's shelf that discussion because it's a good one. Um, uh, imagery. So in, in a no-code environment, I would have access to you know, libraries of stock imagery. Um, and actually, there is a really great WordPress uh, uh, service. It's, what, what is it, WP Photo or something? It's part of the org. Uh, it's a repository of photos that volunteers are taking and submitting. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, but iconography, icons, if I want to put an icon on my web page, I need to install a plugin or I need to hand code it. And so um, more access to more libraries of imagery or some things that WordPress needs some work on. So let's keep moving along here. Uh, typography. So this is that another one of those areas that um, what I want uh, in, in Figma, and Figma just finally fixed a huge problem, which was that the font menu showed all of the fonts in like the system font that you had. All, so they all looked exactly the same, and now I can see them in their actual font. But, uh, and all of the Google fonts. Um, WordPress should have that same interface. I should just be able to pick whatever Google font I want to use uh, for my website. But right now, with um, you know, depending on the theme that you install, uh, 2023, the default theme gives you s five choices. Um, that's not enough. We, we need to be able to have as many fonts as we want, regardless of what theme we have, regardless of what plugins we're using, that those things should be part of it. Sorry, this is Yeah. Why can't we just, why does a big one create WordPress plugin to do that? On the editor, you know, you see the code, it just gets fun. Because Figma's making money on it. Right. You know, that's, be, right. it's proprietary, right? right? They, right. They'd have to, they you know. Sell, they would sell the plugin. Right, they'd have to do that. And um, how hard would it be to write a plugin that doesn't, I'm, there might be, there probably is plugins out here that do these things. But getting those plugins to become part of the core is the problem. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. I wish. Coming to, I think in the next major version of WordPress, they're adding a font library to go alongside the media library. I don't know if it has connections to Google Fonts or anything like that, but I bet that's probably not far off. See, that's that's what I'm loving about this because every new version of WordPress that comes out, it seems like I'm getting closer and closer to this no code. Yeah. Um, uh, so interactivity, you know, um, the, the page builders all do this. You have your phone view, your laptop view, your desktop view, uh, and I can quickly swap between how it's going to look on a phone. Now, you're never going to, that's what you see is what you're gonna, you get is not going to really work until you actually take your phone out and go to there. And even then, do you have every phone that possibly could be using, being used? But in general, this is good to have. We just have this right now out of the box. Um, hopefully, we'll change again. So interactivity. Is there? Yeah. Okay, let's just delete this slide. No, I'm sorry. Wait. It, it does exist. It's not. You can't actually edit the page in the mobile view, but you can preview it. Preview it in mobile, right? After. After you. Okay, right. No, yeah, that's a good point because right. you are able to. There is an, There is some uh, huge benefit to doing that. Um, but yeah, actually switching to mobile as I'm editing would be, yes. I think, a good thing. Um, yeah, right, yeah, like you could squish your window, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, uh, buttons, for example. I want to be able to change the button state based on user. And I just did a screenshot from Google Inspector here, but um, or DevTools. I want to be able to change the state for hover, active, visited, and so on. And I don't have any of that yet in, in WordPress because all I can do is default and outline. There is no rollover state um, that we can do without coding in you know, CSS. So if you want to write CSS all day, you, you can do all these things. But that wouldn't be no code. Um, other forms of interactivity that people switch over to a page builder or to, you know, Cadence Blocks or, uh, you know, an additional block library, things like slideshows. Um, WordPress has a gallery built into it as a core block, uh, but it doesn't do lightbox. It doesn't open imagery up into a, 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 a modal window, which is really what you want with a gallery. I, I don't see why you would just want to look at a grid of pictures. Um, animation, uh, being able to tell something that, you know, it should respond to a trigger like a scroll and animate up or down or do something. Uh, forms are interesting. I think, could you have a forms block, which would be kind of nice, uh, instead of having to always use contact or, yeah, contact form seven or gravity forms. I mean, if you have a very complex form, you're going to need to use a plugin. You can't do everything in core. But I think a basic form plugin would be nice. And uh, cards uh, are another. UI feature where you have paneled groups of content. And I think cards are part of the Gutenberg plugin, so that may, might even be there or coming up. Uh, but these are just some more interactivity uh, items that I wanted to list out. Um, accessibility, so as I'm editing, I want language support. Uh, I want to know how well I'm doing with uh, WCAG, the uh, worldwide, uh, it's the WCAG. Um, I want real-time auditing telling me, you know, this is too light or dark. And uh, I want, um, uh, Michelle was saying this earlier, that you should be, it, uh, all text should be defaulted to being there for every image, not being something that you put in optionally. Um, I want to know how my site's going to perform as I'm building it. And, um, you know, if I have problems with something, I want help to be right there through a, link to a wordpress.org um, uh, resource. All right, so um, I'm going to leave it at that and then just uh, open it up for a discussion. Uh, what else do we need? Yeah. I just a question for you. Yeah. Are you considering additional plugins to be code? Yes. Okay. Right, and that's what I'm saying is how close are we to just I only need WordPress. Like I only need Figma to make a prototype. I don't need, to, oh, there's, there are plugins in Figma, that's true. Um, but I don't, okay, what's, what's the good? I mean, plugins add code, so that makes sense. Right, but yeah. The average user could add a plugin with no code, so I don't know if 
I think pretty much every system, every application has plugins, you know, and there are, but there seems to be such a big reliance on plugins in the WordPress environment that we don't have in other publishing, publishing environments. Certainly it matters, like plugin discretion. Right? Yeah, you know? definitely, right, like that, that's what can happen is plugin bloat, but yeah. Right. Right. Is that fair? Yeah, right. It's, it, that's, it. That's, that's totally fair. So that's why when I was thinking about this whole talk, I was going, maybe the better way to put this is, you know, right. yeah, right, 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 yeah, right. How, how, how or, or maybe even like themeless, like how close are we to just, WordPress is, is and there's no longer this theme. 2023, 2023. You don't need any of that. I, yeah, and I always have like seven, like 2010 sticking around, like get out of here. Like, why do we even need themes? Maybe that's my next talk. Is how close? Oh. Yeah, that's right. That's that's maybe where we are. So. Right. Yeah, but what if your client says, "Well, I need my my font to be in." Um, uh, curls MT, and then oh okay. Well, I have to now install a plug a no, plugin, no, no, or that. I'll have it's to write like the a, like when you install a Figma plugin or a yeah. VS Code plugin. It's just like I need this extra support. Right. It's not really a plugin. I'm not going to the repository. I'm just hitting a button that says I want to use Google Fonts. Yeah. And then only then does it bring it in. Right. So only getting I'm what you need. It. I'm not waiting for the Google Fonts library, which right. Takes yeah. Well, you're saying that would be like an on-screen option. That would be an on-screen option. Instead of like going into your theme, it would be like, only will Google Fonts get this option. Well, correct. Yeah. Saying, this should be all on the front. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like right, no, I'm like right there in the, in the fonts, in the text box, and I'm choosing my fonts, and then it's like, you know, I don't see Google Fonts here, and I can just click the button to install that. I hit a button and it takes two seconds, the thing spins up and then boom, the thing refreshes all my Google Fonts. Yeah. Make a good core commitment to say do that. Yeah. Right? But all this would have to be in core. If you want it to be known code, you want all this. Right. Options. That's a good point. Well, that also depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, if you have a complex WooCommerce website, I mean, that that's just code. I mean, no matter right. what you do with WooCommerce, it's such a big plugin anyway, and then you're going to need some more plugins if you want to be able to pay for stuff because that's not really built into it in any reasonable way anymore. So, like so a lot of this just hinges on what are our base expectations for WordPress so, and how we meet to those. Building stuff to the core to accommodate all these what ifs. Eventually, you're going to have this enormous thing that a lot of people don't need. So, the way I look at it is, I get a nonprofit client. It needs a site that's all text and maybe a slideshow in the front. Well, that's easy because I'm only going to need I need Contact Form Seven and a couple other things, and that's all. You don't even need Contact Form Seven. You can build the form out of the but I don't chat to. I don't have time to or the do. comments. I'm just gonna, I'm just I've done that. Yeah. If I if I load that, I know that I'm going to be able to control spam and everything else because it's all built into the system, and I'm done. Yeah. And for me, at least, as, as someone who's not an IT person by training or anything, I'm, I'm a designer and developer, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing the same thing over and over again or figuring out how I can code something. If there's a good plugin that's in the repository, I'm going to load it. It's the same reason I use a page builder for a lot of stuff, because it's fast. So, but what, do you ever run into issues where you wish you could, you're like, why do I have to put this, dumb plugin in. I wish WordPress just oh, did that. Oh. Like, yeah, that's what I'm curious about. Yeah. It's a, it's a moving target too. Okay, I'm forgetting to answer, the, to re-ask the questions. So, what's our next question? Yes. Um, there are situations where code is, is really something valuable to know. For instance, if you're dragging in some um, word text into a text block, right. Sure. 
Sure. So um, I think to summarize that point, that the um, the need to know code comes into play in a situation where you have content being marked up by one system now being forced into the WordPress's system and being able to decipher that and clean that up. And you can't expect somebody without some kind of coding knowledge to be able to do that, which is a good point. Yes? Well, it, it's what I kind of mentioned before. WordPress is this really unusual thing in that if you're a reasonably intelligent person, you can use WordPress to do what you want to do if you have enough time to really learn enough of it to figure out how it works and, and you have some design intelligence. But WordPress being what I'm trying to more than a third of all websites now out there are, are coded with WordPress. And a lot of the users don't have any interest in the tool itself. They just want to look at their website and see that their widgets are displayed properly and that people can buy them or, or join their organization or whatever. But WordPress is unusual in that if they wanted to, they could go and do that. The interface is there. And it's not really rocket science. But if you're a baker or uh, a painter or a nonprofit organization, you're not really interested in what creates your website image. You just want it to be there. You're interested in making the bread or painting the house or whatever. So WordPress is kind of lumped into, you know, cleaning services or mechanic services or insurance services or the other things that you don't do yourself. You know, it's, there's two perspectives. There's one as a creative person who wants to use WordPress to do something, and there's the other who has a commercial reason for using WordPress, and they really couldn't care less if it was WordPress or some other thing that they don't know about because they're going to hire somebody else to do that. So there's two okay. perspectives. Right. So the, about the two perspectives, my counter argument would be, but that person is interested in being able to hire the widest range of people exactly. to fix their site exactly. and to have a, a system or a platform that encourages more people to yeah. be able to do more with it is yeah. a good thing. That's the yeah. biggest selling yeah. point. You yep. don't have to worry because there's a lot of other people out there, you know, sure. who can help you. you Did know? you have a question? Yeah. Yep. Back to the no code portion yeah. of it. Um, I guess it's kind of a question for everyone, but mostly for you. So, would you rather supplement the things that we need to do with plugins, or would you rather have, like, bloat the main theme with features? So, the, uh, the question is. Yeah. So is it better to um, bloat the core or to keep things as plugins that we install as needed? So I think um, the, the, the core should not be bloated with anything that isn't needed. And we have to discern what is needed. Uh, and that's where the debate can come in. You know, do we really need this feature? And so what I've listed here are features that I think we do need. I, I, at least I want them. Maybe I'm being selfish, but I really want to be able to define a color for my rollover on my button. Um, and I really want to be able to um, have uh, my columns line up vertically and I mean there's there's probably more many more examples that I think are and I and I don't think that these are novel I think that there's probably a lot of people out there and on track which is where you submit these things to say can we do this this I'm sh I haven't looked but I guarantee you people are saying the same things I am but somebody has to make a decision because yeah you do not want to bloat it uh, but it has to grow too yeah. so
superhero movies, and I had like a text, a page for DC News, a page for Marvel News, and those were fed by taxonomies. And each of those pages would have their own imagery, like Marvel would have. <laughs> Marvel would have pictures of Spider-Man. I know I, I get yeah. it all mixed up, but but they would have their own imagery and their own look and feel. So how is that done? Like in a theme, what I would do is just create a page, a page template for each one. There's probably better ways to do it because back then. But can that kind of stuff? Can, can you do that level of custom customization in a new code? I think you can. Um, I think with the uh, query block, there's more and more power being added to that. So like what you're talking about is having, Adjusting the query. right. And so right now you can, page, yeah. right. So yeah, ha you could have a template for DC and a template for Marvel and each one would have their own media query. No, it would be a query block because you could, you could create your page in the, add a new page, choose the template that you wanted to use. And then that template would have a, a query block specifically for DC. So would it have an image, like a banner? Yeah. Like, you could change the DC banner? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. Yeah, all right, I'd like to look at it, yeah. Yes. One thing I would love to see in WordPress core is a way to organize your media. Yeah. Yeah. Logos, whatever. That's that other than to me you know. has been the one thing that drives me. Like I saw it up there something that you were yeah, like we were, we were talking about this, and that was one of the first things that came in my brain is just some way to better organize the media library in folders or something of that nature. Uh, yeah, media like library. Having, yeah, like, I have one that I I I, yeah, so I want to do. Yeah. Do you want to see mine? My, there's my. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Um, wait a second here. Um, I wish I could just pull open a quick. So. Here. We we we. A lot of times we group things. Like I think groups is one of the most powerful things that you can do. I want to name that group. I don't want it to say group. I want it to, because for me, this is like a layer in, in Photoshop or Illustrator. If I could name this latest post or, you know, um, you know attorney bios or something instead of group, I think that would be a really good one. Because sometimes I'll have about 20 of these groups and they say it's group, 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 group. It'd be awesome to, uh, but I love talking about like what, what ifs or I wish, wish lists. So, but um, really good, yeah. I think that, that one is much more practical, being able to, the you know, organization. Yeah, media library organization. Yeah. Like organization. Yeah, tagging. Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm kind of out of time. So uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. And I really appreciate it. And I'll be around all day. Um, stick around for um, Ron Brennan's talk. It's going to be good. Uh, but... All of these talks are great because we're amazing. So, all right. Thanks. Thank